Hi everybody, Sean back with chapter eight of the USS Enterprise 1650 scale build from AMT. This is it folks, this is the final video in this build series, and it's a long one. There's a lot to unpack here. We're gonna be talking about some putty work, some cleanup of the paint. We're gonna remask a couple of the windows here and show you that because it wasn't recorded before. And of course, the much alluded to and I've been trying to avoid it, but it's here. This is the video that has my epic mess up and we get to see that happen, what I do and how I reacted. So uh, hopefully those of you who are new to modeling and maybe those who have done a little bit, hopefully learn a little bit from, from my experience here. Uh, I gotta admit, re-watching it through the editing process was a little painful because <laughs> it's never fun to mess up, especially with as bad as I did. And even though the model ended up turning out better, then before, uh, when especially when you're building something for another person and, and, and you you want it to be your best work and then to realize you just messed up and, and you have to crack the model open, which I've never had to do uh, to fix something. It was really, uh, my stomach sank to the bottom of my, my body there for a minute thinking that, that I had lost it all, but... Uh, Anyway, um, yeah, it, that, that was pretty hard. So I'm, I know I'm kind of dwelling on that a little bit, but it's an important lesson that I learned and hopefully you can learn too. So if you're new uh, to the hobby or just kind of re-picking it up and if you mess up, you make a big mistake, it's okay. Just fix it as best, the best ability, the best to of your, due to the best of your ability. I'm leaving that in. I've taken too many takes of this video to start over again. So uh, anyway, yeah, that's it. So chapter nine after this we will have out in a few days. And that's just going to be the final reveal, the final notes on the model. And of course, the custom display that was built, which I'm really anxious to show you. So that's going to be a, a fun little experience. And in the meantime, enjoy this one everyone and uh, leave a like and a comment and all those good things and happy modeling let's get this show on the road okay <laughs> sneezed excuse me um once the that's all done i can either put on the saucer here or I can put on the bottom part of the secondary hull, uh, and, and uh, kind of either one. Does, it doesn't really matter. I, I don't know which one I'm going to do yet. Um, well, no, I take that back. I have to put the saucer. See, this is why I talk to myself because I got to put the saucer on because there's going to be wires coming through here. So all that's going to be joined up in here. Um, that's when I'll join all this stuff. Then the secondary hull comes in which I have drying somewhere and uh, tie all the stuff together, get it really nice, uh, secure that on there. Then the deflector array. Thankfully, this thing can, can just go, it goes like right in. You don't need to put it, it on, it, it secures. It's got, it's actually a well designed piece. Uh, so I, I can just put this in there last. So the, the big build, the big uh, three-foot model, uh, what you end up having to do is get all the wiring and have it all kind of coming out of the deflector array, and you, you wire it all together, stuff it inside, and then you put the, the front piece on. Uh, th this one, um, I could do it that way, but it's uh, it's not 100% necessary. I may, but uh, yeah, this one came out pretty good. I'm going to have to do a little bit of, a little bit more painting here. I'd, didn't quite get it as thickly on there as I wanted. and I missed a spot, but that's fine. And then here are the tips to our nacelles, which came out gorgeous. I'm, I am super thrilled with these. They're gonna really, uh, they're gonna really light up nice. I'm gonna put the little light behind them. So those, it's coming out real bright on the camera, uh, but, but it's a nice, nice red. It's kind of coming out yellow or orange on the, on the camera, which is which is neat. It would be a neat to have that effect. Uh, but in the IRL, it's pretty red, but it's it's a nice, nice, nice color. 
really happy with these uh they came they came out pretty decent so those will go right on there uh when once that done we'll put some silver highlighting on these little grilly looking things uh before we put the the cap on and then there is going to be some putty work needed and that's unfortunate because these lines are so nice and then when you have to putty with this you end up kind of obscuring some of that i'll do the best i can it, it should look fine um, once I get it on, I just use the old exacto knife and scrape it out of there. I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself here, so I do apologize. Uh, yeah, uh, that's it. We're going to be putting this together tonight. Um, and get it. I probably won't, I won't turn on the camera again once it's done because I'm going to be holding this thing and really hoping for it to to get straight and, and aligned, which will make me super happy. And then from there, we'll turn, I'll turn it up, uh, I'll set it down and make sure that, uh, or I might even turn it, turn it upside down. Uh, either way, I'll try to do it so that there's less stress on it and I'm just gonna leave it alone overnight and then tomorrow it should be cured up really nice. So, all right, everyone, that's it. Uh, time for me to glue some stuff, so wish me luck. And I've got a tilted camera. Sorry about that. Okay. Catch you on the next segment. Howdy modeling denizens. I'm back and as you can see, we have the nacelles attached. Uh, this was a quite an endeavor. Uh, I did it just uh, straight with the uh, Revell uh, glue and ended up having to like really hold on to these for about maybe five minutes and I probably didn't need that much time, but uh, I just held on to each one of them individually about five minutes or so, even more. Um, part of the reason I needed to is because uh, if you can see here, down in here, you see this black. This is uh, due to the glue that I put on uh, ripping the paint away. Uh, so when that happens, this is a good a kind of a good example. I'm kind of glad I failed at it to show uh what happens or why it's so important to make sure there's no paint where you're contacting your glue uh or your cement together because uh one it doesn't form a good bond because it just melts the paint and kind of peels off of it so you really gotta hold it and let that glue penetrate all the paint to form a bond because it does actually melt the plastic and welds it together to so you got to hold it a lot longer um this uh starboard side wasn't uh wasn't as tough as uh, this one this one just this side fit in there more and this one didn't it was kind of loose probably make maybe because i shaved a little like a micro millimeter or something of plastic off and uh and that was that uh that reason uh, i did get a little bit of dirt on here this is actually i think a little bit of glue uh from here kind of because this stuff's a little stringy uh this stuff here it can kind of you know it's not very liquidy or viscous so uh you got a little string i might have got on there so i'm gonna have to sand that down and then repaint it like i said before we're gonna be redusting a final little top coat of the gray over this model when it's all assembled but uh, i'm gonna leave it for now uh for this moment anyway this segment i'll be sanding that down it won't be a problem at all and um and in here I started fixing it so what i'm doing is i've taken this little dental pick tool that i've got and i'm just slowly just kind of rubbing back and forth very gently to take off some of the glue and little paints and and and, and bits that that kind of squeezed out of here when i was assembling it uh, i don't want to dig too deep of course because that will um disturb the bond that it had and uh, i don't want to take any of that away but i'm just doing this to just kind of clean it I, and and it's funny it, like when i do it like this real gently i'm imagining kind of like this maybe something that de uh the way dentists uh work when they're removing plaque from a tooth i'm wondering if it's this kind of same pressure so if there's any any dentists out there that are modelers let me know if uh if this is an accurate uh description i, I have a feeling it is probably just a lot less pain so anyway uh that's all i'm doing here i'm just kind of softly uh picking away at some of this stuff uh so that when i put a little putty in there and repaint it we won't see any any uh 
you know big bumps or anything it'll look seamless it, it, it's gonna look fine uh, but again this is just some cleanup and I wanted to show everyone this uh, what happens um, when you when you have glue and paint it doesn't uh, quite mix so this black you're seeing is actually uh, the primer so it, it took all those like three four coats of paint off and it kind of mixed it all up together so but no problem uh, again just gently calmly patiently whittling this down a little bit I don't want to sc score the plastic too much and I don't want to take out too much glue so I'm just doing my best uh, and hopefully this is coming out on the camera okay um, doing my best just to kind of get the stuff that squeezed out the the sides there and I'm actually this part here there's a little bit right in here that's kind of really sticking out so I'm going to risk taking my exacto knife I'm just doing a light sawing action kind of like like you would cut a steak you just do one direction I'm not sawing like like I said not going back and forth I'm just kind of going straight through like I'm cutting a thick piece of meat and then maybe that will yeah it's coming off I want to be really really careful with this I can feel the gooiness still of this glue because it mixed with this paint kind of created a crud in there so hopefully the camera's catching this for you probably should be wearing my gloves but like I said we're going to be giving a top coat I do have clean hands right now I didn't have any greasy stuff earlier so yeah anyway I uh, won't bore you too much more with this uh, procedure I'm going to work at it a little bit more here not too much longer but it is going to turn out we are going to need to put a little bit of putty in there and of course repair this this nice hole that I made earlier and with that we are again uh, going to be using our perfect plastic putty but in this instance since these grooves are so small uh, it's really going to be hard to get the plastic in there so one of the neat tricks in this stuff because it's water soluble you can take a um, a bit of it and put it in a cup and put a little water in there you put a little bit of this and a little bit of water and you make it the consistency maybe of like heavy cream like heavy whipping cream uh, just uh, viscous enough to get it into a syringe and if you have one of these this, these are this is where this comes in and you and you slurp up a little bit of that stuff and then you can come in here on these really fine edges and put a bead of this stuff and it takes a couple layers because it's so watered down um, but it's a really nice and clean way to get this putty in there and you just uh, use a hair dryer or let it air dry and eventually the water will evaporate leaving the the putty there and you just build it up over a few a few layers so I may go that route um, I'm not gonna do that here I'm gonna just put straight putty in this in this hole uh, here I'm not so sure I think I'll do the, the, the bead first because some of this, it, it looks like it's pretty good. Like, like if I were to paint this over right now, it, it would probably at most of this, you wouldn't even be able to see it. But since we're doing this for uh, Mr. Mike, I want to get it right for him. Haven't done, uh, I haven't done any commission work. I'd like to one day. Um, I, I think the qualities there uh, just haven't haven't bothered to do it um, I definitely would consider it um, I'm not really even sure how much commissions uh, people make off of them if I were to do it it would just be basically to you know cover the material I uh, I love the hobby I mean if I could basically do my hobby for free basically you know with the pay for the materials and and uh, get some cool models out to folks and be able to make nice uh, videos for you uh, I probably wouldn't even charge that much I'm sure a lot of people are quite the same way uh, if you're trying to make a profit 
good on you. I am uh, fully in, in support of that. I'm not trying to say I would undercut anybody because there's people that do just amazing, amazing work out, out there that deserve to be paid extremely well. So, um, you know, if you're wanting a commission work and you can afford the best, uh, definitely get the best. You know, I would, uh, if you're going to commission something, you, you know, you get whatever you can afford to do, I would say, because, you know, of course, research the, uh, the individual, I would say, but, uh, I mean, I have, I have, I know nothing about it, to be honest. I, I just, general advice to folks out there, if you can afford something, get something quality, you know, it's just, I think that's just good advice all around and had nothing to do with people commissioning models or other artwork or paintings or drawings or photography what have you i mean you if you like the work someone does and the money doesn't seem outrageous to you get it absolutely nothing wrong with it but um i personally i would love to do commission work uh just just so that it could allow me to make models uh, these things are pretty pricey <laughs> Uh, when you get into this, this hobby is expensive um, to get all the things you want, especially when you, if you're a modeler or any kind of a hobbyist, you will know that you probably have a lot more unopened or unstarted projects than you have of ones that you're working on. And I've talked to people who build cars, like my cousin, Randy, who likes to build cars that he can totally understand you know you before he was done building one he was out shopping for a new one and i'm like that with models boy i've got two three foot enterprise models i have to start on i've got uh boba fett's uh slave one it's not boba fett starship it's slave one that i haven't started i've got a darth vader that i want to build and light uh, that's going to actually be a a project i'm going to do on the channel it's a Bandai model, one twelfth scale. It's small enough. I mean, it's it's, you know, yay tall. Uh, but I want to put a couple LEDs in there and wire them up and have his little blinking uh, torso lights and and maybe the lightsaber light up. And I've got a um, uh, uh, what's his name, General Grievous, uh, with the four lightsabers. That will be a lot of fun to light up and weather. Um, weathering is, is I, I love to do starships, Star Trek models, and these are very clean, um, you know, very pristine, clean stuff. But also, I like to do Star Wars models. I've got quite a collection of Bandai that I've done, and I love doing the Rebel ships because uh, you can dirty them and weather them and put blaster marks and scar them and, and, and make them look beat up. And, that, and that's a fun thing to do. Like, uh, people that do... Uh, you know, uh, airplane models or World War II tanks, you know, dioramas like that with a lot of grime and dirt and grease and all that fun stuff. Man, that stuff looks so cool. And there's some great, great techniques uh, to do to weather things like that. And I think the closest thing I have is I actually I have a Battlestar Galactica from the, um, from the uh, reboot series. Uh, great series that that I, I've done and um, I'd love to do another one. That's a very simple simple build uh, Might just do that on a show uh, Like a little, you know uh, Montage or a video of showing what I've done before. So anyway uh, Kind of bad tangent there. Uh, I do have one other area here on the nacelles that it looks like there's a crack uh, But right here. There's going to be a couple of pieces that go or, I'm sorry, a piece that goes here. Uh, it's going to fit right over this guy or like that. So there is this bit there. I'm going to put a little putty there. And unfortunately, you can see these lines here. They just don't quite line up. And that is unfortunate. That is just something to do with this kit. Uh, it's very a tiny, tiny little error but it's just the way these things line up it was that far off and it's maybe a millimeter but it's noticeable unfortunately i don't think there's nothing i can do about that but 
uh, right here, I'm going to put a little putty there for this little bit of a seam, just just a little bit to, to get rid of that line if I can, and uh, that other piece will go here, and uh, you, you won't you won't see it too much. And then I got to paint these, so got a little bit of work to do yet on these. So uh, that's it for this segment. I'm going to putty these up, uh, putty here. I'm going to get the nacelles, uh, the caps put on. And like I said before, there is going to be some putty work to do here. Uh, it's just, this is just not a perfectly flush connection. So there will 100% be light leaks coming through this bit. So uh, not sure how I'm going to tackle that. What I may do is I have seen people put a little bit of putty uh, on I might I might put putty on the top part of the, of this guy here to where when I push it down and the glue on the bottom or most of it so when I push it down at least that putty will be filling the gap here in the top which is going to be the most visible and then the glue on the bottom and it'll hold I'm not worried at all about it coming apart and maybe just you know put very minor bit of putty there just to block the light and then and then you know seep it with this uh, I, it's hidden away there, but I've got some CA glue, which is called canopy glue, I think, um, will be generally used for the lighting, and it's very runny, and that will get down into into the cracks here if I do it slowly. So I'm considering that. Uh, I think I might do that because, like, even up here, you can see there's a little a little imperfection right there. Unfortunately, right on the top. And you can kind of see the hole there. And that's going to be a light leak problem for sure. So uh, I might put a little putty there, putty on, on, on this part, squeeze it on, and, and with glue down here, that might work out. I'm going to try that, and then we'll let you know. Uh, I'll do that off camera, of course. Uh, I'm already talking too much. And then uh, from there, uh, underside, I've got some of the wiring tidied up a little bit this tapes on there just to keep these things from flopping around on me um i've already test fitted the nacelle i'm sorry the uh, saucer section so all the three wires i have do go through here just fine and the test fit was pretty good so we'll be gluing that again with the revel uh, glue and i'll be holding on to that for about five or ten minutes just to make sure i definitely want to get this one right uh and that's about it so putty putty little putty there put the nacelles on and then the cell caps and then um we'll see how she looks and then put the saucer bottom and then we'll be ready to go final coat of uh gray and then the big reveal of taking the this tape off i'm not quite ready to do it yet i i want to do it so bad I mean, it looked so awesome before, and I haven't seen it with the gray because this this tape is on there real nice, and I don't want to have to reapply it. So, but I just know it's going to look awesome. So, really looking forward to that. I hope you are too. And with that, we're going to say uh, say goodbye for this segment, and we'll catch you on the flip side, everybody. Bye bye. Hey everybody, supplemental segment here. So I didn't end up having to do, or I chose not to do, the uh, syringe watering down method there that I was going to do. Uh, if I had, I would have shown you. Um, I just went ahead and gave it a shot with the uh, with the old uh, palette knife here. And I uh, put that in a couple layers here and got a wet rag and wiped it down. It came out fine. Uh, when I paint this over with the gray, uh, it will not be very visible at all. So I just went ahead and did that. And the only thing I'm a little bummed about is is I did have to fill in the seams here to make it look kind of consistent on both sides because I had that huge hole here. Uh, I had to kind of make this seam or this little gap there disappear. Uh, it's quite all right. Uh, this isn't a full-blown cannon ship. Uh, after all, I am lighting the nacelles, uh, taking a little bit of an artistic license with the ship. And um, anyway, that, that's how it is. And no big deal. Uh, it's going to look fine. Uh, so I just want to give you an update on that. And the thing, I, when I was talking earlier about taking some putty and putting it on the top part of 
these caps here from the Bussard collectors, putting putty on the top half and glue on the bottom half, and then putting it there so that at least I would get the putty smushing between here to take care of any light leak problems. And I was thinking, oh, the glue and the, the, there's going to be light leaks on the bottom. And then I totally forgot about these little pieces here, which go on the bottom of the nacelle caps. And they kind of, uh, they kind of stick out like halfway, halfway on the, on the nacelle and halfway on the Bassard collector. And so I'm not going to have to worry about light leaks where, where those two uh, pieces meet because that's going to be blocking the light for me. So what I can do is put glue on here. I'm sorry, I'm out of frame. I'm totally trying to see this. I'll put glue down here on the on the cell cap where it meets there, and glue on the nacelle cap piece. Maybe a little bit here to glue to the piece, to the. I don't even know what this brace. I guess you'd call it. And then putty here. So that's going to block out all the light on the on the top part of the nacelle, which is where we really got to be worrying about. And it's where that unfortunate little that little uh, David Letterman tooth gap is, is right here. Uh, so we're going to, you know, put a little putty in there and then smush it. And then that putty will kind of go in there and fill the gaps. I might even pre, I think I'm going to put some putty in here ahead of time from underneath just to prep it uh, just a little bit and then putty there and then smush it on. And then the glue will, will hold the rest and I'll just hold it for a minute or so to get it on and then we'll take care of the glue. So that's gonna work out good, I really think. Again, uh, this is uh, an experiment for me, so I just wanted to explain what I'm doing before and then we'll see the results. I'm pretty confident. Now, the other thing I did on the bottom of the nacelles here, I took my X-Acto knife and I scraped off all of the paint. This is to bare plastic uh, here and on this side here. And the reason I did that is because of what we were talking about before is you you need to have glue on bare plastic to bare plastic so that it, it welds correctly. Uh, if it was this to just bare paint, it, it might peel off at some point. It might come away. Uh, it's not going to be a good bond. So I, at least I have these two areas where there's going to be a solid bond. I'm going to put a good clump of glue on these two bits and then some glue approximately in the middle where they're going to meet and that should be enough to hold these little pieces on i'm not worried about you don't have to glue the entire thing it's just it's it'll hold fine uh so that's the little segment update everybody i just wanted to show you that uh kind of changed my mind mid-course and and that does happen a lot when you're modeling you're going to change your mind you're going to forget things you're going to remember things uh, you're going to have little ideas that come out of nowhere. And this build, even though I've done this a few times, this build, uh, I think I've done a few things here where I have never done before. And, and that's cool. And I'm really happy to be able to share those with you so you can see my learning process. And maybe you're getting a learning process too. So we'll be back uh, with some more updates. Stand by. Well, that was nice. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? We are back with another segment. And as you can see here, the ship has been assembled. Well, at least for the most part. Uh, we've got the nacelle caps on and the nacelle end, other end caps on on the back. The secondary hull is assembled. And what we're just missing is the deflector array and a few of the little minor pieces that go here on the back of the nacelles and on, on the inside of the chiller grills. <clears throat> Those are all painted and ready to go. Uh, I've got the, well, I had the deflector right here. Wouldn't you know it? Uh, here it is, <laughs> which I think we've we've talked about. So this is, is ready to be just kind of sat, uh, just glued right in there. Uh, I'm holding off on that part again until we're all done. Um, so. Uh, just a quick segment here uh, before we do the final painting and you'll see I think last time I did have this um, a little bit of of putty correction here that I had and I've gone ahead and done some the putty work on the bottom of the where the nacelles uh, join the secondary hole and then I've got some putty work that I had to do in here on the bottom of the neck 
and some other various places. Now, how do you know where to do putty? Well, the only thing that way to do that is obviously to turn on the lights. So uh, with that, and that's what this segment is about, I'm turning on the lights here. And there we go, we've got the nacelles fired up. And we've got the nice uh, navigational strobe or the strobe lights blinking here on the aft section. And you can kind of see some of the, the glow coming in from the chiller grills, which I'm so excited. I wish I could just rip this off right now and it's so hard not to. Um, so anyway, uh, I had gone through, I think off camera, this was last night or night before, uh, and filled in a little bit of the putty here. I had some light leaks. Uh, I believe there's a little bit of a light leak. I mean, very minuscule right in here. I don't even know if it can be seen on camera. There's a little bit there. So I've got a little bit of putty work yet to do there uh, slightly. Now with this part here, I am going to do the watered down method of the perfect plastic putty. Uh, again, uh, this uh, wonderful substance right here. Put it in the uh, tin cup here with a little bit of water, a little bit of water at a time, and you stir it up until you can get it into the syringe, which I have laying around somewhere uh, right here. So, and then you get it in there, and that way I can really target, target the area down here and get that in there very slowly. Um, other than that, so uh, the lights are on, and the reason for that is I'm gonna turn the ship on its side here. And I've already begun some of the work let me get my other pointy device. Here you go. I've already done some of the work here. And you can see right here where I'm putting the, the little pointy thing. There's a little light coming through. Now those are light leaks. Uh, you see a little bit here, but these are windows. We're going to be we're going to be taking these tape pieces off. Uh, the, the, I, I do have a, I am very happy that these are very apparent. I can still take them off without a problem. So we've got this little line here of light coming through. And this is the same on the other side of the ship, pretty, uh, pretty much. So yeah, you can see that. Now this is normal. Uh, this isn't me messing up. This is just a thing that happens. I, I can, I could probably, you know what? In fact, I am gonna do the bead method uh, on this one just to see how it goes. And with this one, what I've been doing is just, I, I laid a little bit on there with the, with the palette knife and spread it through and just ran through with my finger and then rubbed it off. And, and it's fine. I'm gonna sand it a little bit more, but I think I'm gonna go with the rest of this. I am gonna go with the bead method. And um, especially, except for here, the top portion of the secondary hole is actually overhanging the bottom section just slightly. I'm gonna put a little bit of putty here along this edge to kind of make up for that that little gap or that little cliff thing and then i'm going to sand it down and smooth it out as best i can now uh, the other good thing about this section here is there is a decal that goes about from here to the edge uh about there i believe if i'm if i'm not mistaken uh which will cover up a lot of these things and and that's just the nature of this kit being so small and i think they've actually still use the original molds for this back from probably the 70s so they i mean they've cleaned it up and stuff but still th there's a little bit of imperfections here uh, not to knock amt uh and second round Th these are wonderful kits and i love them and i'll continue to build these uh but this just the nature of the game with this kit that you get this little bit of overhang there it's and, and it's got to be difficult to make these two halves uh, really come together. And I'm thankful that they're in multiple pieces. There's one piece here and then two pieces for the top. Um, I'm thankful for that because if it weren't for that, I wouldn't be able to light this thing. Um, so, you know, uh, you got you to take what you're, you're given. Um, I do have a little bit of a light leak here in the front of the neck. Let me, you can see right, right in this area here, there's a little bit of light peeking out. Uh, I'll just hit that with a with a little bit of primer, even with the. Uh, it's actually not too dark. I could probably hit it with a couple of the shades of the gray. Uh, but probably a shot of primer, like literally one squirt, probably will take care of it. And uh, that's it. So this is the cleanup stage, everyone. Oh, I lost my power. Um, this is the cleanup stage, and this is the part that is the most challenging because 
you're so close to being finished and it looks so good already and this is where you make your decisions on uh, how detailed do you want it to be how perfect do you want it to be uh, if you're making this for a person obviously I for me anyway I tend to want to do more if it was for me I would for instance these little light things up here on this uh, starboard and so I'd probably let it go since this is for someone else I'm going to do my best to get this thing as perfect as I can um, but again it, it's even then if you're into any kind of art or any anyone who does anything creative will will know that they are their own worst critics um, when you're creating something you see imperfections that almost no one else will see unless you're being judged or you're putting it like for a competition or something like that. So, um, you know, if you're doing this for yourself, everyone, um, and, and it's just going to be something you're going to plop on your shelf and turn the lights on every now and then and show off it to your friends coming over. Hey, check out this little model I did. Um, it's fine. You can be a little bit sloppy. Uh, if you're making it for someone else, obviously you want to put, put a little bit more effort. At least in, by my way of thinking. So uh, I'm being a little nitpicky here. So if you see me struggling or I say I'm a little fix this, I'm going to fix that or something, always try to keep in mind that I am making this model for another person. So um, with that being said, uh, we're going to be moving on. That's the end of this segment. Uh, I hope you like what you're seeing so far. I, I sure am. I'm, I'm happy with it. The... The nacelles are, are, are nice and, and uh, even. Uh, they actually kind of go back a little bit, like they're turned inwards in a weird way, but I think that's pretty much just the way the ship is. Uh, it's straight when you look at it head on. I, I can't show you now because it would be bumping the camera. Uh, but but she, she's straight, she's stable. When I look at it from the side, it looks great. The nacelles are, are glowing just perfectly how I want uh, this one's a little darker actually I, I may end up just putting a little bit more of the red to, to me a red on here to balance these two out this one's a little brighter for whatever reason I think it might be uh, I painted the inside a little bit uh, more uh, no problem I can take with the Tamiya clear and hit that with a few shots around there it's fine um, but other than that I mean this model's coming together Come together great you're gonna you're seeing all these smudges and black marks where the glue kind of took some paint away i've got the putty so it's, it's she's looking a little rough uh but a couple hours of cleanup and she's gonna look great um i did put a little black here so i did put some putty on this little rigid part here in the front and you can see there's still light light blocking i have the fix um because when you put putty in there and if the putty's good and if you got like a nice paint and it gets in there's so a paint can actually kind of act as a sealer too uh, you don't want to rely on it too much but it can kind of just lightly fill a hole and if it dries the right way uh, you'll be fine um, but so this is uh, this is probably okay the rest of the paint will probably fill in I might do a little bit of putty but again it, this is this is where you you uh, either you kind of what's the word I'm looking for uh, if you use too much putty you're gonna lose the detail here on these ridges if you don't use enough you're gonna have a light leak so um, it's kind of a, a decision you have to find a happy medium um, get a little bit of clean up here to do a little exact knife to get that excess putty out but very easy um, so all right I'm gonna continue um, but again uh, wrap up put a little putty here to even this ridge out this ridge out I don't like this you can hear this that's because this side's higher. So I'm going to put a little bit of putty down there just to smooth it out, sand it down a little bit, and then on this side we'll use the bead method with the syringe and try to get that, that locked down. Um, there's not too much of a lip there. And a little light sanding because some glue kind of came out uh, when I put this together and then taped it. But uh, that's it, everybody. So that's it for this segment. We're going to uh, get this all cleaned up. I will come back. And we'll do another segment of video once she's all cleaned up and ready to go. 
and then I'll show you everything and talk about what I might have learned and then from there the next plan is to do give the final coat of gray paint over the hole for the smudge marks that we've made and, and the this last kind of coat of course masking this and then uh, from from there put on the last few pieces and oh uh, I do have to paint these guys here there's these little rectangly things uh, at the back of the nacelles that are kind of a dark gray like this so I have to mask that and spray them uh, this is a quick quick job uh, easy I won't film that but almost done almost done and uh, these are windows right here if you're wondering there's two more on this side that are covered up I believe we'll find out all right um, that's it for now for this segment uh, we'll catch you in a few hey everybody uh, just real quick here I decided to film some of this <clears throat> here so I just want to show you what I got this here is the perfect plastic putty it's it's like one little schmear of of the putty with a squirt and a half or so of just water from this bill and I'm, I apologize for the zooming uh, so what I've done here let me zoom out let me drink. I have used this syringe and I've tilted the cup like this and pulled up just a little bit and it's just it's just up into here so what I'm gonna do is put the bead here along the side of the the hole unfortunately it, it is laying on the side so you may not be able to see this I, I can't really tell the way the camera's mounted and 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 uh, the angles of everything so what I'm gonna do is just go through here and just lightly and I'm I'm barely pressing on the plunger here I'm I'm almost letting letting the substance just kind of come out on its own I, th I think it would be capillary action or, or some other kind of a uh, sciency name and I'm sorry about the silence here I'm trying to concentrate on keeping straight and talking to you so it's coming out pretty good the other side I I ended up doing just all with the putty knife or the pallet pallet knife and this side I'm, I opted to go with the syringe method because I want to see which one works better all the way around and I was already kind of almost done and I had only a little bit left to go now this is coming out and I'm feeling like this is a much better method for that side of the hole and it looks like I got just the right amount of thickness with the water and the putty ratio now it, it is going to dry it's going to run a little bit that's fine it's, it's running now uh, it's also because I don't have the ship perfectly tilted on it on its edge so there's a little gravity is pulling pulling things down off the side of the ship like like a rainwater wood or something um, so I'm, I'm just going back over where I went again this is very thin if you do this method you may have to do a few runs a few coats so we'll see if it's worth it now up here it works really good back here it's struggling a little I got a little bit of light leak coming out here so what I'm doing here is I'm pushing it out a little bit above the line to let the gravity kind of pull it down into this groove so not bad okay it, it's, it's not too bad I'm going to uh, show you there so this is uh, very very wet so what I'm think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this here let me grab something let's airbrush this just some airbrush thinner from Vallejo I'm gonna put it there maybe another bottle it's a little heavy here 
All right, so that's kind of propped up. So I'm just going to let this sit here for a few minutes yet because uh, it give this a little time to dry. This putty dries very, very quickly. And with the water here, uh, it may take a little bit longer because I've, I've added some more moisture to it than it usually has. Um, so I'm going to let that sit. Now, uh, with this here, th there's some putty in here. So I want to make sure and quickly flush that out. So I'm going to grab my... Uh, a, a little measuring cup that I have here for a surprise yet to be named with this project. We are not going to reveal that quite yet. I'll give you a little hint. It is a like a NyQuil measuring cup, but it's for plastic resin or uh, or you mix your own resin. So uh, I've pulled in some water there. I'm just going to go down here and squirt it down into my bucket uh, I do have a bucket under the desk for trash and it's just just a bucket a five gallon bucket and um, I don't have to worry about getting paint on it or anything it's just a thing and uh, definitely recommend you have one right underneath where your workstation is because you're gonna have little bits of tape and glue and gunk and all kinds of little things that you're gonna be um, disposing of so I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing here so I'm just pulling in some water here and just flushing it out I don't want any of that putty that I pulled in there to dry in here because I like this syringe it wasn't cheap well at least you know it was cheap but it's not like I can afford to buy a hundred of them so uh, I'm just I'm just in and out flushing it out um there we go now it's now it's starting to come out it was having a hard time getting it getting it in so um never forget to clean your materials your tools your workstation uh your model can always wait but if you let things like this sit for too long you let putty dry in here if you let paint dry in the tip of your airbrush you can be spending a lot more time cleaning and clearing than you really want to okay so this is good that was the taking the syringe out uh you know let this sit for a while let it dry i think it's okay i don't see any more light leaks here um very small light leak here and here i think i can take care of that with the paint um and, and plus it's on the seam underneath it's uh, a little bit easier to clean these things up and i think we're good okay uh that, sorry about that everyone it's just a little bonus segment extra segment there i wanted to demonstrate the uh the beading and maybe i should have propped this up before when i did that but i didn't uh hopefully you understand the idea uh, of just mixing up the perfect putty with a squirt or two of water to the consistency of milk maybe like a like a you know whole milk or, or a half and half or something like that not too much thicker than that uh, and and then your syringe will work and you can get this nice beading action and then uh, you just let it dry in a light sanding and you're good to go so that's it for this segment and we will be back shortly stick around are you all uh next segment and as you can see here we are finished hopefully finished with uh painting and taking off the masks that we had done before so uh before we do the big reveal i want to let you know i have not lit this up at all uh, other than what you've seen by already um i had the windows that i took off and we got the chiller grills uh masks taken off all the little uh side pieces are put on a few detail paints like these little things i don't know what you call them on the side there uh the impulse engines uh everything's been puttied over as best as i can uh they still might have a tiny minor light leak in one of the nacelles um not sure uh but uh, as promised i have not lit this so I'm going to be lighting this, uh, turn this, firing this bad boy up uh, now uh, live so we can get a true reaction. 
Uh, before we do that, though, I uh, do want to go over a couple of small things. I ended up having to put a little putty here for the impulse engine where it connects in there. I had, to, I already, I knew there was going to be a light problem there, so I pre-puttied that. And I uh, did a little bit of putty work there, some stuff on the side. And uh, another thing, one of the things I've noticed about this kit in particular, it looks like I still got to wipe this down a little bit. It's got some putty. Um, the, where the neck meets the saucer on this kit. Now, every time I built this kit, there's this little gap between the neck of the secondary hull and the saucer. It's like this little... This, this little hole and uh it, it's a little annoying i wish they would have fixed that with this thing but uh you know what can you expect i mean this is actually i did look i think this was from 1971 if i'm not mistaken i probably am but the original kit of this was was designed way way back then and then they they read they rehashed it somewhat but for all intents and purposes i'm pretty sure this is the uh original mold that being said i'm i'm fine with it so but you know just like they're saying there's a couple little things on this kit that uh sorry there's a little little dust there um that are a little bit annoying and one that's one of them um the other is that uh, we, which we've talked about already the tendency for these two upper half and lower half not to fit perfectly uh, i've done the putty work it's not my best work Probably could, could have gone ahead and fixed it there. But since I'm lighting this and we're going to have that decal there, I'm going to leave this as it is right there, even though it's not 100% perfect. Uh, I think I would actually end up doing a little more harm than good if I were to fix this little bit here uh, that there's going to be a decal over anyway uh, because I've got these windows here that I would have to then sand and kind of redo, and it would be a, it would be a big pain. I think I'd cause more harm and be upset. Just knowing from my experience, uh, there are some times when you find an issue, it's best just to leave it because all in all, when this thing's all done, I'm, I mean, there's still the decals to put on, the clear coat, which is gonna, gonna be apparent, um, which we'll talk about. Uh, I don't, um, I don't know about this video or not, uh, but the, the clear coat does clean up some of this stuff. It darkens the color somewhat, changes the tone, and, and I'll be showing you that. Uh, I've got, I'll pull out one of the older kits I've done, and they've used the same color paint, and we'll show you what the what the mat, uh, the gloss color, color does. So uh, with that, uh, yeah, took off all the mask. I, I was super happy with the way the chiller grills looked. I can't wait to light them up for you. So, um and I went through and just took off all the masks from the front windows. And actually, the, the little port windows, I ended up having to use my Dremel tool and kind of cut these out with that little micro mask that I had put on over here, over the layers of paint. Uh, I lo lost most of them, so I had to kind of guess on where they were. No big deal. The Dremel tool uh, took care of it pretty good. So without further ado and without further ado, further blabbing. Uh, I'm going to shut this light off up here just to give it a little mood and we're going to give the countdown here. Three, two, one. And it's on. Hmm. No, that didn't work. Out. Hey, everybody. Now, a uh, little bit of sad news here. I was in the middle of recording the segment where I was lighting up the the ship to do the big reveal, and it it bombed on me. It turned out that some something happened. I had tested all the lights numerous times, let it run for a couple hours. Everything was fine. And uh, something happened when I was assembling the two halves of the secondary hull that uh, something went wrong, and... The only thing lighting up right now are the nav lights and the uh, top uh, from the front of the cells here. Everything else di didn't light up on me. The chiller grills didn't light up. None of, the, none of the lights lit up. So something happened here in the spaghetti. So uh, it's like I said before, uh, be 
recording and showing all my gaffes and my mix-ups, and this is certainly a doozy. Uh, it, it's just one of those things that happens, I guess, uh, with some uh, sometimes. And so I'm going to record what I'm doing to repair it. So um, I was a little bit in despair. Uh, I've got everything done here um, for the most part. I've got a little bit of paint here to clean up, but it's all puttied, uh, light blocked and everything. I took off all the masks. The chiller grills look, look so nice. And I was really looking forward to seeing those light up because I haven't seen them yet. Even though I had tested the lights before with the masks on and everything was running fine. Um, I was waiting to see the final thing when I took off the mask and everything was painted. So, um, it's not, not uh, going to happen as smoothly as, as I intended. So, um, a little bit of learning opportunity here. Now I've gone ahead and used my exacto knife and to I'm gonna crack this open, of course. So I took off the deflector array, which was it's all painted and looking really nice. So that's gonna require some repair work. I've got glue and putty here that I've got to scrape off and sand down, and <clears throat> likewise anything right here, gotta clean this up, re-putty it, re-light block it and everything. Uh Gotta admit, I, I'm I'm a little upset and disappointed uh, right now, uh, but uh, we move on with these things. So, crack that open. I've taken the exact knife and I've kind of done my best to to get this as best as I could. It looks horrible right now, but we will get this cleaned up. I'll sand it down and um, remask these windows if I need to, and then re putty, you know, and re sand and repaint. Nothing that can't be fixed. That's that's the important thing to remember here. Uh, I'm, all I'm going to lose out on is time. But uh, at least we do get to show you what I'm doing to fix it. So, uh, X-Acto Knife has been gone through here. I've gotten most of it uh, on here. Let me see if I can... I'm going to do the rest of this kind of kind of live... I'm just going to poke this and really gently, you know, as uh, one thing to keep in mind, you have a set bite like this, you got to step away from it for a few minutes, which is what I did because I was, I, was, I was quite upset and I didn't want to rush through this trying to figure this is going to take me uh, two or three days to repair probably. So, uh you know, I don't want to try to rush through this because that, that would just cause a lot more damage. So I'm, I'm just kind of probing here with the X-Acto knife to where I last had it. So it's about here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of saw. Just put, I'm, I'm kind of going, I'm going downward. Kind of like if, well, the way you cut steak. You're supposed to cut it, uh, put the pressure down and forward away. I'm not, I mean, I'm doing it toward here, but I'm putting the pressure this way as I'm going down. And I'm not sawing up and down uh, like, like a traditional, um, like I'm cutting wood. I'm, I'm more like it's real thick uh, steak or something like that. Just really taking my time here. It's coming along. I mean, this glue is pretty, pretty good. And I did, I think I put some glue on the other side of it as well. If I remember right. It's getting there. The last thing I want to do is rip it and force it and tear it because it would pull so much paint off and everything. I want to get this as clean as a cut as I can. You know, it's just, I guess, like a surgeon would do, uh, I'm assuming. You know, they don't uh, make big ripping cuts. You go more like a scalpel and as fine a line as you can. I got to be very careful here that I don't slip and, and jab my finger. It's starting to kind of pop out here. So I'm going to take smaller. I'm not going to pull it up as much so it won't pop out. So we're getting there. All right, now, good. All right, it's off. Whew. Okay, one step at a time. So here's the spaghetti here. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. 
and we'll see what's going on here. So you got okay. Okay, so there's our nav our strobes. Nav lights are are nice. They're working. They're bright. I mean, they're beautiful. I love them. And the 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 red and green lights on the other side are are real pretty as well. You can see those blinking really really great and clear. The colors are coming out and shiny, and the nacelles are glowing here too. So <clears throat> the question we have to ask ourselves is. Why are the uh, these lights not coming on? Uh, none of those are. So that's going to be the the trick here. So with that, I'm going to stop the tape because you're just going to see me fiddling around and trying to poke around and figure this out. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'll just explain it before without showing it. I'm going to take some of this tape off here. I'm going to test first these here these uh wires are for the chiller grills which aren't on so i'm going to test those make sure those work and then i'm going to test the wires coming out of the neck and it's probably just somewhere where i connected all this stuff together uh that it's not a good connection or because i what i did was i joined all these lights the ch chiller grills these lights here and the lights in the saucer section and the neck all come together in one point into one wire and then supposedly down down that tube. So my guess is the thing that where it's mixed mixed up is where I connected everything. And when I did it, I thought it was all fine. And and here's another uh, mistake I made uh, in my um. Well, hold on a second. Ah, well, <laughs> well, folks, <laughs> I just learned something else. Um, I didn't have my power supply turned up where it needed to be. It was just not getting enough juice. So I just cracked this sucker open. <laughs> I didn't need to. And you got to see my reveal uh, with the ship uh, in open surgery. So, all right, well, why don't we... <laughs> Why don't we just go with it? I'm going to shut this off. My goodness. You know, the things that happen to you, I swear. And you know what? I'm leaving this in there. I'm going to own my loss because I I learned something here. And now again, I'm, I'm going to be a broken record. That's why I'm making this channel. Is, is so people can learn. And what better way for you to learn than to watch me screw up? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to hold this here and let's, ta -da, let's do the reveal. Here we go. Okay. Chiller grills are on and beautiful. Loving it. I'm checking for other light leaks. I don't see them. I've got a, a little bit of cleanup to do on some of these windows. Uh, I've got the, oh, uh, I think I've mentioned it before, the little red light here that's on the side. If you look at the show, I'm going to finish painting that up a little bit. I didn't quite get that all the way. Um, the lights are blinking beautifully. I, I really, really, really am happy with that. I am quite embarrassed, I will tell you. Uh, but... Uh, Let's see now, but as for uh, everything, let's, we've got, uh, it looks good. I think some of the, I mean, the windows could be a little thinner, perhaps. Uh, you know, again, these were masks that I made. I homemade these things. Um, I know on the 350, three foot version or 350 to one version, they have masks that you can get that are precision cut from a computer. I, I don't have that available. I don't think they make a mask for this, this kit. Um be nice if they did i would have ordered one um and maybe i can get in contact with some people and see if they consider i i just don't know i don't know how much how popular this kit isn't these days um looks like i gotta bore out a couple more holes here that that i missed um all in all though you know i gotta say i'm i'm happy with it let me uh let me turn off this light here
and uh, we'll see what it looks like in a little bit lower light. So this looks pretty good. I, I like it. Star collectors look great. Bridge dome lights good. Planetary uh, sensor array looks pretty good. Oh, there's just a little loose connection there on the power supply. Okay, well, uh, I guess my next task is going to be sanding this sucker down again and reapplying it and redoing some putty, uh, putty work. So. Uh, note to self when things don't look right, look at your power supply. Um, and uh, what else? Why don't I just uh, I'll take this camera down so you, go, you guys can see what happened. So there's the power supply, and this uh kit or these lights and stuff that I have in here are uh 9 to 12 volts, and I had uh, so the volts are right here. Uh, is what I had it on and it, it was down so I'm gonna turn it turn it down and if you see when I turn it down it goes really low and the nav lights stay on but when I turn it back up to nine they came back on so if you have a power supply folks and you turn on and only some of your lights are working, check your numbers. <laughs> as we as we saw right now that uh this wasn't working. So all right, um I guess I'm gonna call that uh a wrap uh for this video. I will say it is a modicum of success. As we got the uh sorry about the glare. Got the impulse lights on and um let me mount this back up here. Sorry about that, everybody. And uh, yeah, that that's going to be it for this video. So I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a good portion of a, of a day here fixing this up. I don't think it'll be too bad. Uh, just a little bit of exacto knife work, some some uh, sandpaper, glue it back together, resand the outside, and apply some paint. It'll probably take me. Take me an evening to do. Uh, definitely, I think I'm breathing a sigh of relief. I'd rather that happen than, than have to rewire anything. So the wire work was good. Uh, it was just my not checking my <laughs> my power supply because why would it have uh, turned down? I, I must have bumped it or something earlier. So, All right, uh, enough laughing at myself. Uh, have, hopefully you all had a good a good laugh at this and maybe learned something. And, uh, it's okay. It's all good. Uh, maybe it'll turn, you know what? I'm sure it'll turn out to be better. Uh, I have a feeling it'll look, it'll look even a little nicer. So with that, and, uh, until we come back to next time, we'll see you later. Hey everybody, I'm back and we are repaired from the, uh, snafu there that happened. Um, haven't finished painting yet, but, uh, we did go ahead and repair, uh, sanded, uh, all the, you know, glue and gunk and everything that came out. I glued it last night, taped it. Uh, I, I'm 24 hours uh, from the last update. Um, so yeah, when I put it back, of course, there's a lot of glue and debris and things that were left behind. So... Uh, I went ahead and sanded that down. Then I laid down a good amount of putty and sa and sanded that, uh, and it's pretty flush. Now, if you see here, there is some light leaking right here. Uh, it is, however, very smooth. Um, so I'm pretty sure that my paint is going to block that out. I'm going to put paint over that, uh, the gray. Obviously, I'm going to have to reload the airbrush and, and get that laid down, probably maybe a couple, three coats. Ought to do it. Um, shouldn't be that big a problem. But got it all cleaned up. It's very smooth, actually. And, and I think I had mentioned this in the last video or last segment is that I was pretty sure that it might actually end up being an improvement. And from the feel of this, I, it, the flatness here, and flat, I, I might have been correct. <laughs> so we make lemonades out of lemons, huh? Uh, same thing with this side. Now, I do have a bit of a... Uh, bit here that I sanded off some paint so I might I might hit that with a little primer um 
But uh, all that being said, uh, what I'm going to be doing here is I've got a, I've loaded a new X-Acto blade here. This is a uh, number 11, if, if, you're, if I haven't mentioned it before, probably have. Um, so I've loaded that one. And what I want to do is just demonstrate kind of what I do, what I did, rather, because uh, I've never done this before, uh, to mask these um, windows off. And uh, to be fair, some of these windows are a little bigger than I would have liked. Um, again, this is the first time I've created my own masks. I think I did a pretty good job. I know I could do a better job, however, and um, maybe be a little more consistent or find a different way to measure uh, the mask. Because what I basically did was eyeball the thickness. So I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna do that again because you know I, I don't have another method at this point. So uh, we're gonna hear the chair move here, so I can give myself some room. So what I've, I've just got this little straight edge here. It's just a thing, and um, I'm just showing you what I did to make these masks. So I basically eyeballed it, and I put the straight edge. I put a piece of uh, masking tape on my mat, and I've got this lined up. And again, eyeballed this only, and I think some of them I made them a little too thick. So if I were to do this again, I would probably try to maybe get a, a fresh roll of tape that's actually very thin. And before I go forward with that, I do have some here. But it's quite old. This is probably a perfect thickness. Uh, it's just very old and I, I, I didn't feel that it was going to stick uh, for the multiple rounds of paint that I had to do. So I might, I might buy some new and test it on uh, an old kit or something like that if I choose to do this again. Hopefully I will. I'd like to do another one of these. These are fun little builds. Um, okay, so we've got that kind of eyeballed there, and I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and make sure I'm pushing it against. I don't want to dig into the mat so much, but don't be if you have one of these, don't be afraid to put a little pressure. They're, they're kind of made for this, so I'm going to... I'm just running down. Okay. This should be enough for doing both sides. And there we go. We've got our little our little strip. So I'm gonna put this to the side. Now, this is the other part where I eyeballed it. I just I'm just taking this and just cutting horizontally around. Uh, down this way to cut off the pieces uh, a couple of them I made a little too long some of them may be a little too short uh, There's just not much I can do about it at this point. I still think the ship looks good. Hopefully you do too, but So I'm just gonna take a Little piece there and just a little sl slit brand new blade so it's kind of digging in there sometimes you gotta dull these up okay got it and there it is the little the little window mask and then what i'm gonna do is come over here let me find uh i'm just gonna lay that on there now i'm gonna take instead of using the blade this is that dental pick thing I have. Uh, and th this is a sharp point, but it's not nearly as sharp as that thing. And I can kind of reposition it with this guy. I try to use this whenever I can and not get lazy and use the blade because the blade will slice little lines in your paint. So that's in there. Push it down and we've got one little mask. That actually looks pretty good. I I wish I would have made all of them <laughs> that, that nice. So what I'm gonna do here, that's just a little demo. I'm not gonna film this whole thing. I'm going to go through and remask these windows on, on both sides of the, of the ship. And then uh, from there, load up my paint and give this a fresh new paint job over there. So uh, I'm gonna take care of that. And th when I come back, 
hopefully this will be all clean and better looking than it was before again same thing over here and then you know big masking over this part uh oh uh one little thing i just want to add i did start laying down some layers of uh clear red on this window here and the one on the other side um if you look at the show you'll see that that one window was red uh again i've opted not to black out any windows on this one um i could but i don't like the idea of a lit window with a black like just pure black uh on the ship it just doesn't look right to me and there's not that many windows and it maybe in my mind like the ships at red alert and everyone's at uh, battle stations or something so so there's no one no one's in bed no one's asleep and and that's why i'm doing that i just kind of like it um all right so i'm going to continue doing that i'm going to mask up all these guys and uh repaint it and then we'll come back and and take a look and see how it turned out and then 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 we're going to clear coat the, the ship, uh, a couple quarts of uh, clear coat, which is very easy and simple. And then the decals go on. And after that is the display stand, which uh, is a nice little treat I have planned. And that will actually be a separate video, uh, but what we'll preview it here at the end of the this series. So, all right, we'll see you in a little bit, everyone.